Welcome to Small Talk with Raincraft. I'm Subha, a leadership and executive coach, and I'm Hasita, a marketing strategist. We're just two people who love to talk and love to learn. And this is us being curious about the world around us. Join us. Hi small talkers. Welcome to season 4. So Subha, what's your overarching theme for season 4? and when you say career lifting conversations what are you really implying we are going straight to the meat of it the, yeah <laughs> let's jump right into the deep end <laughs> yeah and you know i think um, we've had three three seasons where we've it's not that uh, we've not focused on career it's been an underlying theme always i think it's it's been about people either our own conversations or bringing in guests who have really done well in you know whatever the work that they do in the businesses that they've built in the careers that they've shaped for themselves and taking off from there and what my coaching focus is now i want to bring to our listeners you know concepts ideas and thoughts on how they can think about who they are at the workplace whether they are uh, an employee whether they are a manager leader business owner entrepreneur you know whatever that hat you may be wearing finally it's your career right mm-hmm. i think um, you know that's the that's the broad view of a career that which is uh, what you're doing for um, two reasons one is definitely a livelihood Mm. but the other also because it is an area that you have expertise in you have interest in you have developed skill sets and it's something that uh, you know you're willing to spend x hours of your day contributing to so much right and that x is a big x <laughs> it's not a small x yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly so in the, in our in our conversations around uh, career i uh, really like to think deep about what are some of those skill sets uh, what are we seeing in managers people leaders uh, entrepreneurs today uh, what are some things that uh, each of us could probably revisit and think about doing differently doing better yeah. you know maybe some things which we shouldn't be doing <laughs> so that those like you said long big x hours that we spend in in you know so in in the service of our work and our career is meaningful satisfying and impactful for sure i think and it's also the need of the hour uh, is the sense that i've been getting and i'm sure uh, in all the interactions that i've had with my team members at this time uh, it's become very clear that nobody is doing it anymore i mean yes to some extent it is sustenance uh and you're not going to be jumping off the boat without some kind of you know life jacket or some protection to that extent uh there we go with my water related uh, euphemisms again uh <laughs> but we are all thinking about a much larger question right like how fulfilled am i uh, what is this taking from me today in the interest of a tomorrow uh and what does that tomorrow even entail so if i'm putting in a certain amount of time and effort today uh what are the guarantees and what are the variables in terms of what that could translate like is a question that i think all of us are asking uh so definitely in need of some uh, clarity on a lot of these things today no for sure uh one of my uh, favorite kind of business icons mark cuban and both of us have you know we generally do end up listening to wherever he does speak and i heard him recently on uh, adam grant's new podcast and that's really what he says that the, the current generation at work uh, he says i like to see that they bring in a lot of kind of all of themselves to the decisions that they make they factor in a lot of things yeah yeah right about the work that they do it's not just that hey i get to walk into this big brand um, organization at 9 in the morning and i leave 12 mm. hours later and that in itself should be satisfying to me because they are paying me to do that right that that thinking is gone yeah. um, and it's about does it tick multiple boxes that it should because that's how i want to live my life mm-hmm. right and 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 that's important to keep in mind that mm, for many of us and i think it's really not not just the young generation i think it's those of us who are in our 30s 40s and 50s and uh, working and knowing that you have to be at it for another you know 
20, 30 years, yeah. we are realizing that there's a lot to learn from this young generation too. And maybe the, the pandemic was that shot in the arm that we needed to make us rethink a lot of what we took for granted. So true, so true. And the more I hire in uh, content roles and especially creative roles, this is becoming that much more evident, right? The youngest of folk, they are not, no longer saying, okay, let me give it a shot or let me see how I can be good at this. It's come down to, will I even enjoy being good at it, right? Eventually, uh, it has to be satisfying to me that if I'm going to be putting in an X amount of time into an experiment, uh, then the results have to be uh, reasonably promising across multiple domains, I think. Uh, and a big one is the self, right? Self-fulfillment, uh, growth of the self as a holistic individual and not just as somebody who has come from a certain pedigree or has served a certain number of roles in certain kinds of companies, mm. but also what have I taken away in the process? How much time have I spent nurturing my own priorities? Uh, whether that be cultivating relationships, whether that be, uh, you know, forming meaningful uh, connections with the people that we work with, which could be a huge priority today. I think 10, 15 years ago, anyone speaking about building meaningful relationships at work would have been seen as the oddity. Uh, but today it's almost non-negotiable and I think we all want that. Correct. No, no, very true. I've I've got uh, young uh, folks in my team and there have been a couple of uh, discussions around certain clients or certain kind of work, whether we want to uh, pick it up or whether we want to wind down on something. And I found their perspective always um, useful because um, I have somebody who, it, she's very consistent in telling me that I don't want a client who is difficult to deal with mm -hmm. right and uh, it, it makes me think stop and think because for a long time you know I didn't think we had that choice like a client is a client <laughs> yeah and in fact I have been challenged by that notion as well it's quite interesting it hits very close to home because I have also been given the advice that unless you work with all kinds of clients uh, you will be sacrificing a certain amount of growth. But somewhere my intuition is telling me today that sacrificing mental peace in the interest of a larger goal, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it might work for some people in certain contexts, but it's not the choice that I want to make, right? I want to work with people that I can send Christmas hampers to and really mean it, right? I don't want it to be a formality that we do on, a, on an annual basis. Oh, and when you're able to um, kind of, yeah, I guess maybe it is a privilege, but when you're able to uh, pick and choose or when you're able to kind of make those decisions, uh, it is it is very, very tangible that that peace of mind itself becomes very tangible, right? It, you can, you can feel <laughs> yes. that. That is the goal now. <laughs> you can feel that um, you are, you don't feel a weight on your shoulders. You feel that the clients that you've chosen to stay with, you are serving them much better with a lot more positive intent. Yeah. Uh, you've chosen to give them your time and energy. And um, I think that that's, and hence the outcomes are better. And hence you get, uh, you know, more referrals and hence you get more business from the same client. And it, and it has a, a cascading positive effect too. Its own benefits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have this client who will invariably have breakfast on a Zoom call with the video on. And frankly, I find that so refreshing. Uh, I'm so done uh, with the whole, have you dressed up? Have you put on a coat? Are you sitting in a professional environment? I think they have taken the first step to make it simpler for the rest of us to also kind of own the realities of today's workplace. So, and that's, that's huge. And in speaking about, I think the theme of, you know, what the season is going to be, uh, you have also kind of spoken about Mark Cuban's favorite uh, piece of business advice or the least favorite piece of business advice, which he flips. Uh, and what he essentially says is that you should be following your effort and not your passion. Uh, what do you feel on that? Because it's a bit of a shocking. I have myself been told uh, at the very uh, impressionable age of 17, 18, when I was picking colleges, that I should be following my passion. And frankly, I had no idea what that meant, except that it was some kind of abstract notion I had to reach for. So what do you think about following your effort? No, I, I genuinely feel that, um, you know, intuitively, that's what we all do. And then we get waylaid by this follow your passion and love what you do so much that you can't get enough of it kind of um, 
you know dialogues mm-hmm. that we start questioning our effort mm-hmm. right but if we stick to following our effort i think it it really takes us places because if i look back um, i mean i didn't have any deep passion for any kind of a career or any kind of work yeah. uh, honestly i feel at those times when you're expected to have passion you don't even have the information to know what different needed to have a passion can i just say i feel so relieved hearing that from you <laughs> that there are actually lots of people who don't have a passion and it's okay to be no, that right, like i i call myself a default engineer like i i landed up there because <laughs> uh, because my passion was not medicine i faint at the sight of blood so i ended up in engineering and then uh, after that engineering uh, and deeper research and an ms in uh, you know one of my core subjects was not my passion so i ended up in be school right and i followed my effort because i i i could crack a cat like nobody and i followed <laughs> that effort and i ended up in b school uh and in b school i i enjoyed the finance courses and um you know i ended up with uh, finance and technology systems and i ended up with in city bank and i mean like where where what was this passion like i have no passion would have never got me here yeah. right and for 15 years i had the ride of a lifetime again following my effort yeah. right i kept doing things and i kept getting better at them i kept enjoying what you know i think the only criteria was like am i enjoying what i'm doing and that in a way defined some of my career choices because i i was in an operations and heavy people management kind of role and i genuinely enjoyed it so when opportunities came to be a sales person i felt like i i don't th- that's not where i'd be happy putting my energy and effort yeah yeah right and so i stuck to operations i did that for 15 years i had a great time doing it uh, i mean not that there aren't ups and downs and really bad days but i'm saying overall um, i was okay to put in those hours yeah yeah right um, and and build teams and groom people and you know make them the next level of leaders etc etc um, and so even today if i look back what, there was no passion i mean it was just <laughs> yeah uh, it's it was what you did like it, yeah 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 it was what i did but i kept uh, kind of improving on what i did i kept learning more about things that i did and uh, putting more effort and getting better at it and uh, that that became my career right and and now the next phase of my career uh, i still don't call it a passion sometimes i call it a calling because the mm. space of coaching is is very intense and it's very um, you know you you really in some way you really need to want to be in that seat yeah, yeah. um right so I, i i could at the most say it's a calling but again passion feels like too powerful a word because there are days when i don't don't want to be doing this have the energy yeah, yeah yeah for that conversation and then there are days when i will do that even you know from an 8 pm to 9 pm i'll have that conversation yeah. right but again i'm following my effort right and it's uh, it's working so when i look back at uh, the early days of my career so to speak uh, i don't think it i saw it as a career at all right it was just a thing i did uh, because it was the opportunity that was presented to me and for a long time it it was true it's only now almost i think more than a decade later i'm considering the fact that it might have by default become a career uh, so where do we go from here right so when you're really in the early days uh what advice would you really give to somebody who's two use cases right one is where i know that this is something i want to be doing i got into product management or i got into consulting or whatever else uh and therefore i want to be good at it uh, even on the days when i don't feel like being good at it so that's obviously one kind of and the others people like me right like we just end up by default wherever we ended up and we just followed that effort i see that now in the sense that we showed up every day and did the same thing uh, a little better every day and you end up in a different place so which of these is really right or wrong or you know there there's a lot of confusion in my mind in terms of whether it's a choice or whether it's by default no i think um, the the simple answer to that is that at any stage right and even if it's early stage etc just focus on being really good at whatever it is that you're doing 
right um in in the words of uh, our other guru cal newport right like be so good they can't ignore you right so keep getting you know investing in your own skill base uh, how can i be you know if if my job is accounting or if my job is writing or if my job is teaching what am i doing to really keep improving my skill set on a daily basis and how is that translating to whoever i'm you know kind of serving with that skill set yeah and be dependable be reliable like you said just turn up every day and do the thing that you're supposed to do and over a period of time because you're investing in yourself you're getting better and better mm-hmm. at what you're doing and there's no way that folks around you aren't going to see that mm-hmm. and and then leverage that leverage that for opportunities that open up next roles that open up projects that open up leverage the skill set saying hey i'm walking into this because i'm so good at this but i'm also going to add something new to it yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm going to add a new skill that will probably serve me for the next x number of projects or you know roles yeah so what we are essentially saying is that with that amount of daily weekly whatever consistent effort mindful effort maybe even to some extent that consolidation does end up happening uh, and maybe you it is true in the sense that clearly if i've done this for so long then there is some level of interest in it it wouldn't be you know a default but that, that i'm sure there was a point in time where it was no longer a default choice and it became something that you more actively uh, invest your time and effort in and i also like this idea so much more because it doesn't then uh, put you in a gridlock with just one identity yeah true true and uh, just i mean even if i think of my journey in raincraft if i had told them if i had told myself that uh, writing is my passion and um, you know the written word is my passion etc um, i would feel really bad when my energy for it died down right but but i followed where the effort was taking me and i said okay I've, you know for 5 years 80 to 100 clients i've done a really good job following my effort on the writing and content side now it's not feeling or rather now it's feeling like painful effort yeah yeah right i'm not enjoying it anymore and so i'm going to question whether i want to be doing it or not and i came to the decision that i've done that i'm going to all my effort and energy is going to go towards coaching mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right because that's that's where it's making sense for me right now so it's okay to drop things it's okay to again maybe in a couple of years i'll add something else right where the effort comes easily to me mm-hmm. easily not in the sense that the work is not a challenge or difficult but the mind and body say yes go do this yeah so what i'm also hearing is that first of all lower that barrier of wanting to be passionate about something and if you don't find it then oh god your life is in ruins you know it's probably not that so i think all of us fall on the spectrum somewhere between those two extremes uh good for those who i mean follow their passion uh, and i'm sure there are those rare use cases whom we all are inspired by uh virat kohli most recently uh that guy was born to play cricket like that to <laughs> other <laughs> but interestingly i think he is actually the poster boy for following your effort <laughs> because no matter what right whether it's a duck or a century the next morning he's in the gym mm. right he's he's working so out true. he's preparing he's that that's where his energy he is comfortable putting that energy of his so true so true didn't think of it that way but it makes a lot of sense it's just about also showing up on a daily basis which seems like an easier thing to do <laughs> than to always have this larger purpose in life and question it every morning noon and night so yeah i think great start to another season for sure uh, because we are already making it easier to think in terms of a more sustainable career right uh, and it's not something that's draining you of energy i think sometimes i look at it as sip investments right when the like the debit goes out it hurts a little bit no because it's not money that's yours anymore maybe an investment of that kind is also similar uh, it may be a little painful and confusing in the early days perhaps but sometimes you just have to believe that you do the good thing and it it pays off i just feel relieved so maybe that is the lifting <laughs> sounds good that, that was our uh, do you feel lifted that was our first career lifting conversation for this season. yes i do feel a little lifted <laughs> hey small talkers thank you for listening till the very end 
We love bringing these episodes to you and we hope you enjoy them too. Please do drop in your comments, likes, shares, reviews, whatever you can do on the platform that you're on to help us reach a larger and larger audience. And that would really make our day. You can find out more about today's guest or today's episode in the show notes. All the details and how you can find us on social media is right there. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.